You know, uh, for everybody listening, this is going to be tough. So I want you to I want you to really, really listen. I want you to dig in. I want you to listen and, you know, whatever you're doing, let's let's quiet it down and, and, and let's have a chat because this is not going to be easy. So just a few mo moments ago, I met Janeth and I saw her walk in. I go, I know I know who this is. This is the mom of Daniel. And, you know, we get here every year, guys, and, and not every child makes it out of the hospital. PCH gives your kid the best opportunity to live. And, you know, unfortunately, not every child gets to go home. And Janeth is the mom of one of those children. And we're going to talk to her right now. And as soon as I saw you, I, went, I gave you a big hug, didn't I? I mean, that was a big Gatos hug, right? Yes. All right. So, Janeth, Daniel, eight years old. I'm looking at a picture of him. Uh, I'm, I'm shaking. He's such a beautiful little boy. Thank you. I want you to tell me about him because, you know, he's no longer with us. I know you miss him every day. Um, it started with a bump under his knee. And every eight-year-old has a bump somewhere, right? Correct. But you thought, okay, let's go get it checked out. So what, what was it and what happened? So my first, my husband was one of the first ones that he's like, he's a boy. He probably hit himself with something. He's going to be okay. And there was something that I'm like, that just doesn't seem right. Mm. So as soon as I took him into the pediatrician, he saw it. He didn't, he sent us for x-rays right away. It didn't take like 30 minutes by the time, you know, we were just getting home and they called and they're like, you need to go to PCH. I'm going to have the oncology team him ready for you and as soon as they said oncology I'm like cancer and that just came instantly to my brain we rushed here and uh, it was December 11 2020 about 10 30 when Dr. Ritson walked in and she pulled me out of the room and that's when she told me that he had cancer mm. and that we needed to get ready so he could start treatment all right, we're being joined by Janeth. She lost her little eight-year-old son, Daniel. Uh, the doctors and nurses did everything they could here at PCH. When they told you that he had cancer, I mean, you're a mom, you're out there, you listen to this. I mean, what, what, how does, what do you do? What do you do with that? I, in that second, I, I was trying to be positive, and I could just turn around and look at him and see how happy he was and his smile, but he knew something was going on, and... And he, even though he found out he had cancer, he was always trying to be positive. He was always making jokes. He was always like playing music. And sometimes I'm like, hey, bring the music down. There's other kids that feel, you know, they're not feeling well. And he's like, but I'm feeling good. Yeah. And I asked the nurses, I'm like, is it okay? He's like, as long as he's feeling good, we don't mind. He can play his music, you know, he can sing. And, and it was those little things that were always making him feel special yeah so you watch him go through chemo he had some serious complications he did and you had to watch him go through this yes what happened um first we did a rotation plasty which that's the surgery that never healed then we found out the cancer was growing at the same time and they decided to amputate his leg to give him the best quality of life that he had and then we started radiation right away he did 40 rounds of radiation too um and treatment at the same time so we were going you know radiation treatments and and he was still being positive i could tell he was a little bit upset when they amputated his leg because yeah. he was looking forward to his rotation plastic because he said he was built different he was a transformer and it made him feel special and he said he loved his leg the way it was and to me if you look at the pictures like that leg wasn't pretty but he loved it either way so what were the last moments like with him? Um, so he felt it was, he was already feeling like it was time, you know, time was getting closer. And he was telling me, let's go to Ryan house. Let's go to Ryan house. And I'm like, I'm taking care of you. Because when he was diagnosed, he said, I don't want to die at the hospital, mom. I want to die home. Yeah. So we went home. But a week before, he was like so desperate, and he's like, let's go to Ryan House, let's go to Ryan House. 
and he already like had, was struggling to see his eyes were popping out because of the cancer oh. he would wake up with his eyes full of blood and his nose and it was just so painful as parents to see so that's when I told him I'm like okay it's gonna hurt for me not to have you here but I don't want to see you in pain anymore you can go and we went to Ryan house they had everything ready for us and we got there around 8 p.m. by 11 he was just throwing up blood all night oh. till the next day like around 11 30 they said we only have a few hours left yeah. And, you know, if you want to call your family, and he passed away on at 206. Yeah. And he's with God now. And he's with God. And he's got a new body. And, and he's got a new body, and he's happy, and he's... He's playing up there, isn't he? He has both of his legs, yeah. and he's healthy, and, and it's all I keep in my heart. Yeah. I know he's not in pain anymore, and... Mm. And as long I know I'm hurting, and I know I miss him, but... I know. He's I'm not in pain. You. I'm hugging you. I'm hugging you. Oh. Hey, Janeth, you are uh, you're very brave. We love you. And you know what? Everybody's going to know your son's name right now. Everybody in town is going to rally around you, and everybody's going to know Daniel and his struggle. And we love you, and we thank you for coming in. And these phones in a second are going to ring off the hook. And you know why? Because your kid was tough, and he battled and battled and battled. And we thank you for coming in. And in a second, you're going to hear all these phones ring. And the reason they're all going to ring and thousands of dollars are going to pour into this hospital is because of your kid. So I want you to know that, okay? I know. He, he wanted to be famous. I, he's, he's famous. He's special. Now he's famous. And, and if I can turn this pain yeah. into awareness for other parents, for other people, then it serves its purpose, mm. you know? Yeah. I wish we could avoid other kids from dying from cancer, but... The, the only raising awareness is going to make that happen, yes. and that's the reason why I share the story. God bless you.